Today, I have a choice. I could take apart one of these three Cummins engines, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got my mind made up. This engine's already missing a valve cover and the turbo's off of it. I'll leave that one for later. That's a 5.9. And this is a 2015 6.7, and there's a lot of stuff on that still. So I think that one's gonna be another day. But this one, this one's just right. It's still got a turbo on it. Still got a pump on it. It's got lines, injectors. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take apart this 2004 Dodge Ram 2500 5.9 liter Cummins engine. Today's teardown is going to be a two part series. In the first part, we're gonna take all of the external parts off like the turbo, the manifolds, the rail, the fuel injection pump, and we're gonna pull the cylinder head. And in the second part, we'll take the short block down to a bare block. We're also not gonna take this apart on an engine stand. My stands are not gonna deal with this and my tables are completely out of the question. If this engine were to take a tumble off of one of them, I'm pretty sure the floor would never be the same. In fact, the last one of these we did, we weighed all of the individual components and the crankshaft weighs more than I do. And I, I know I'm gonna get this question also, is what did you pay for it? Well, I can't really tell you that. I can tell you that if the price was wrong, it wouldn't be here. Much like the rest of my cores, I have margins to meet and if, it, if an engine doesn't meet the margins, it's typically not something on my radar. This and these are, are very good engines for me to part out. And for two reasons. Number one is I make pretty good money on them. But number two is not a lot of it gets scrapped or thrown away. Most of it gets reused, which I really do like that. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the turbo and the manifold off and go from there. Now, this turbo sort of has a history. And not so much with the general public, but this is an... HX35W. This was the turbo of choice for some of the old Mazda cars that every that I used to work on and my friends used to have. So it's kind of ironic that I'm pulling one off of a, a Cora engine because these things used to be like the most sought after thing in that community. But anyway, uh, this one spins good. It's got no damage to the impeller. So it seems like it would be a good turbo to sell. I mean, obviously we need to check it a little better, but it's not really held on by much. Uh, these are pretty easy to pull in the truck. Uh, this one has been off and not really correctly installed because, well, it's a core. So there's only just a few things holding it on. There's no, uh, the oil returns already disconnected. These are not water cooled. And it only has two of the four bolts holding it to the manifold. you go like i said these were pretty desirable turbos back in the day uh that was before all the generic turbos that's the best way i can put it came out kind of killed the market on on oe turbochargers as an upgrade for other cars but this one looks pretty good there's no signs of like oil seepage between the center cartridge and either the uh compressor housing or the turbine housing and the the turbine wheel does not have any uh, oil on it, so that's a good sign. And it really doesn't have any abnormal shaft play. The wheels don't hit the housing. So this is a good sellable turbo. I really don't know what they're worth anymore. It's been way too long, but happy that I have another component to sell, although the external wastegate is broken. Um, cool. Always something. Let's go ahead and buzz this exhaust manifold off. <laughs> Well, I can't see any obvious issues in the exhaust ports, so this really isn't too bad. This is probably going to be mostly loose. Most of the cores I get back, people have uh, they've worked on and kind of haphazardly placed the old parts on the core. Hmm. <sighs> 
Well, I'd like to apologize for whatever reason. I had no audio when I went to take the top valve cover and this plate off. So I'm going to kind of cover that with some of the valve train stuff. Now, uh, the valve cover is broken. This happens a lot on these cores. It's a big, heavy engine. And if anything sits on it, or if it leans over, it's, it's easy to break the aluminum stuff. So that'll end up getting scrapped, which isn't that big of a deal. And here is the valve train. So the, uh, this plate here has the uh, injector harness run through it. Each connector services two cylinders. And then you've got uh, captured nuts on this wire harness, which I think is ingenious. I, I guess they planned on people trying to drop those. But this is just held on with a couple tens. It comes right off. I think they're tens anyway. And then now you've got the valve train. So uh, the interesting thing about the valve train, well, a couple of things. So here is the push rod out of this engine, and this is an LS push rod. Obviously, they're much longer on a Cummins, but if you look, it's got a ball end on both sides on the LS, and on this, the cup is actually on the uh, Cummins push rod. And then this is how you adjust the depth here uh, when you go to set, the, set your, your valve lash and valve depth. Uh, it's got this lock nut, and these are threaded into the rocker arm, which is, uh, I mean, it's kind of archaic, but man, it works, and these things last forever. Another thing that's interesting is that each rocker arm services two valves, which is pretty awesome, too. And they have this little lash cap that likes to fall off. I can't really pull one off when I want to. They just like to fall off for some reason. But anyway, uh, this is a pretty robust design. I mean, these things are meant to be serviced, meant to last as long as the truck they're in or longer. So I, I really do like the design of this. But uh, I think most of the diesel stuff is, de from this era anyway, is designed to last that kind of duration. Well, I failed miserably trying to get these out without the special tool. I uh, did not come prepared today, but we're gonna pull the cylinder head with the injectors. I'll get them out at a later date. So let's go ahead and start zipping some head bolts out. Hear that gasket loosening up. I'm going to go ahead and pull this head off. Uh, if you guys think I'm going to do this by hand, you're nuts. I think this head is over 200 pounds, so I'm going to use a forklift. That seems to be the most appropriate tool for the task. Okay, here we go. Well, I can already see an issue. Cylinder walls look nice, so that's good. So that piston looks normal. I know the diesels have a strange, if you haven't seen a diesel engine before, they have a very strange combustion chamber. It's actually in the piston. That piston and that piston appear to have struck the cylinder head. They have an outline of what the bottom of the head looks like. The only way that happens is you can't really make a rod longer is that you uh, give it some play, like uh, not having rod bearings. So I think, I think we're onto something. I've got the cylinder head sitting on my workbench here. Uh, this is the front of the engine. This is the rear. And these are the two cylinders that we suspect uh, have rod bearing issues and that the pistons came up high enough to make contact with the cylinder head. This head has a distinct line all the way around the surface of the head and the valves. The same thing on this cylinder, except it's not quite as distinct. It's also coated in oil. There's oils everywhere. The rest of them look pretty normal. It's just these two cylinders. Uh, I think this tells a story of what we're going to find in the bottom end. Time to keep plugging away at the bottom end here to get it a little more stripped. We're going to pull the crank pulley off, pull the timing cover, and the fuel injection pump. Ah! 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 
Sometimes these can kind of get stuck in place, so I'm going to give it a little t thunk. So I can go ahead and pull that off. That came off a little too abruptly for my liking. Right, now we've just got a whole bunch of tens. Some of them are already missing. Give this another tap. Nope, nudge. That doesn't do it. So now we're going to pry this cover off. There goes a crank seal. And that's what it looks like behind the timing cover. So I don't see anything chewed up in here, and it's not extra dirty. This is pretty much what they usually look like. We're going to go ahead and pull that nut off so we can slide this off and pull the pump off. This is your cam here, your oil pump here, and then this is the sprocket, which is a massive sprocket on the crank, which drives all of it. To get the gear off the pump, uh, I'm using this really cheap and probably not correctly sized for this job gear puller. See if we can get this to come off. These usually aren't that strong on here. Bam! Just like that. This is the fuel distribution pump. These are worth quite a bit of money, even used. Unfortunately, when we get these, they're almost always broken. The sensor is almost always broken. We can't sell them without, so we'll go ahead and take the 313s that hold this in and pull this pump off. Sometimes I need a little nudge, just like so. There we go. Well, I think we're at a pretty good stopping point. I really had wanted to get the filter housing off tonight, but I'll go ahead and include that in part two. In part two, we'll take this short block completely apart, pull all the parts out of it, and inspect everything. I think we know what we're going to find. The real question is, how bad is it? Is the cam good? Is the crank good? Are those parts scrap or can they be reused? We'll find that out later this week. And I'd also like to note, this is only the second 5.9 I've ever torn down. I've had my guys tear some of them down too. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not going to lie to you, but it comes apart just like most internal combustion engines. It's not that complicated. If you'd like to buy parts off of this engine or any of the other engines I've torn down, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in our description. Shoot us an email and we'll let you know whether we've got it or not. And I will catch you on part two. Thanks for watching.